It was now two days before the feast of the Passover and the unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might seize him by deception and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, because there might be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster jar of ointment of pure nard, very costly. She broke the jar and poured it over his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves, saying, Why has this ointment been wasted? For this might have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and given to the poor. So they grumbled against her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me, for you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want to, you can do them good. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for the burying. Most certainly I tell you, wherever this good news may be preached throughout the whole world, that which this woman has done will also be spoken of for a memorial of her. Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went away to the chief priests that he might deliver him to them. They, when they heard it, were glad and promised to give him money. He sought how he might conveniently deliver him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and there a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters in, tell the master of the house, the teacher says, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will himself show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Get ready for us there. His disciples went out and came into the city and found things as he had said to them and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. As they sat and were eating, Jesus said, Most certainly I tell you, one of you will betray me, he who eats with me. They began to be sorrowful and to ask him one by one, Surely not I? And another said, Surely not I? He answered them, It is one of the twelve, he who dips with me in the dish. For the Son of Man goes even as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had blessed, he broke it, and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them. They all drank of it. He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Most certainly I tell you, I will no more drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in God's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me tonight. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. However, after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. 
But Peter said to him, Although all will be offended, yet I will not. Jesus said to him, Most certainly I tell you, that you today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke all the more, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. They all said the same thing. 